Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook along with Allison Thompson with The Money Farm. We have lower prices in all but soybeans and meal right now. And let's talk first of all about the grain trade, Allison. Uh, wheat, the predominant, predominant leader down, corn kind of following, but both of those are kind of trading weather too, aren't they? Yeah, we're stuck in just a volatile weather pattern, honestly. I'm just looking at different areas though, right? Uh, spring wheats and Minneapolis, or Minneapolis and KC wheat are definitely the leaders to the downside. Up here in spring wheat country, we are looking at some better chances of rain. And that actually goes up into Canada as well. So together, it looks like our conditions might get a little bit better here going forward if that weather pattern holds. So we're trading the, the rain on that end up in this area where we're supposed to see continued rains down um, through many of the key winter wheat areas. And we know that the rains did help conditions last week. So they're thinking that that'll probably happen again this next week. Whether or not that actually results in some better yields or better production, it's obviously questionable. But just seeing that those conditions would increase definitely helps things out. And then, of course, on corn here, we're seeing some pressure because we are seeing some rains go through the corn belt today um, that are actually popping up on the radar. And I have a feeling that that's probably going to pressure things going forward is looking at these forecasts and then is it actually going to materialize? And obviously, the last couple of days, we've seen minimal losses on corn and soybeans. Um, and I think they were really waiting to see if it would materialize on the radar. So they pop up on the radar and we did see some losses here early into session. But still, we're, we're kind of dominated by what weather forecasts do. So there's always a possibility here by the end of the day, who knows, maybe forecasts will change a little bit or even by tonight's session. So we're just in a, in a volatile weather market a little earlier than what we're used to. Yeah, we'll see if the weather models flip flop as we go into the noontime period, because that's kind of we saw both sides of study yesterday. And I guess that's to be expected. Um, we also are going into the WASDE report on Friday. Not expecting a whole lot of changes in terms of the supply and demand tables there, are we? No, honestly, looking at expectations for Friday's report, they're not looking for a whole lot of change. Um, mostly looking up on some ending stocks for corn and wheat, while soybeans could actually be moved lower, but they're not expecting a huge change. So if that's realized, it could honestly be a non-event for the trade. But having such uh, tiny movements be expected by the trade definitely leaves an element of surprise if we did see a bigger move by the USDA. So it, it definitely leaves the element of surprise, as all USDA reports are. Um, so who knows? And of course, there's been a lot more talk of, about the debate on whether the USDA will make any adjustments to production for 2023 in this report. I personally here, we we aren't looking for a change. I think it's too early to make those adjustments yet this early in the growing season, but they do have a point. We, we do know that conditions are down, but how that equates yield isn't really known at this point. So I wouldn't expect to see those can um, yield adjustments yet, but who knows? The USDA could always leave a surprise that way too. And if they do, it would definitely be friendly to markets. Okay. And corn and wheat specifically, we should mention, there have been a lot of Black Sea headlines rolling around this week, but the market almost feels like it has fatigue. Yeah, it does. I, I like the way you put that. We're definitely seeing the boy cry wolf one more time here. And I have a feeling the market's just going to be slow on, on buying those rumors. We we did actually go up on it, traded to some key resistance levels, but we weren't able to trade through it. And that honestly led to some technical action here as well. So it's a little bit of both. But honestly, we're, we need to see those bullish headlines continue. We haven't seen good follow through. Something needs to happen. Uh, just word of mouth isn't good enough. I think the trade actually needs to see it affect uh, supply channels or something along those lines to really add some fear and maybe even spook the funds here. Gotcha. So soybeans off to the plus side on their own today, kind of shaking off the negativity or at least the lower corn and wheat trade. So is that some spread trade? Is that soybean meal being higher, providing enough support for that market? Or is there something else going on? Yeah, early earlier today, the whole complex is trading higher, and we could thank higher crude oil for some of that. But like you said, yeah, we're seeing meal be continue to be a higher today too, which obviously adds some support. And it's mainly to our front month. So obviously, demand there is doing well domestically, um, keeps it supported. And we're looking at those deferred contracts not having those same amount of gains. 
just because we are, again, looking at some of these weather forecasts, kind of like corn. But also adding to soybeans today, we did receive a report out of China that their imports of soybeans this last month were record high, um, taking out any other month on record. And they're expecting next month to be the same. So it definitely tells us that maybe they are seeing some improved demand. On the flip side, though, a lot of those imports came from uh, Brazil. Obviously, they've had cheap prices compared to us. But it definitely leaves some room there that hopefully that demand will continue. And hopefully the U.S. can add some of those sales too to old crop. Yeah. And we saw some business to Spain yesterday. So maybe if uh, Brazil is selling to China, maybe there'll be other customers that will pop up. Okay, let's, let's talk about this cattle market. We scored some all-time record highs in the futures here early this morning. We're setting back now, even though we've got some cash trade up in the north confirmed at 190 and 300. What do you think? Yeah, honestly, stuff still, even though we're seeing a pullback here, it's still supportive fundamentally on the market. So it's not surprising. We, we see pullbacks on grains and across markets broadly, too. Um, when you get up to some new highs, make some fresh highs, it obviously leads to some technical selling, too, which isn't surprising. So to see that today across the board, it's it's healthy for the market. The question is if it's going to be sustained. Like you said, cash prices have been the leader. So as long as those remain strong, I don't see that we're turning quite yet. All right. And the hog market actually feels like it's been getting some help from this rally in the cattle market today, just looking like we're taking just a little breather. Yeah, it, it does, to be honest with you. And uh, the last couple of days, too, uh, we've seen it go higher, maybe on some short covering. We know the funds were short. So maybe we're just seeing a little bit of that back and fill action there as well. Yeah. In fact, the funds were record short in the uh, hog market. So that is mm -hmm. very much a point. OK, thanks so much for joining us, Allison Thompson with the money from That's Markets Now.